Fish Tank people, FishTankTV.com, Dawson'sFishTanks.com, bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. Hope you had an awesome week and you're excited about this holiday season and watching Johnny Manziel start for the Browns, baby. Let's go. Come on. Here's what's going on, folks. The aquatic experience a month ago, I was fortunate enough to meet with Mr. Gary Lang again. He is a legendary, probably the best rainbow fish keeper that I know of in the United States. I know there's some other people that have emailed me, but uh, Gary Lang's stuff is ridiculous. I've met him a couple of times. Um, I've got a sick video at the end of this video. My man Corey hooked up with the Aquarium Co-op out in uh, Washington. No, drop him a comment on his video saying, do an event with Dustin. I've never been out to Washington State. I'd love to go out there. Speaking of events, you're definitely going to want to check out uh, January 17th here in Lexington. I'm doing an event at the West Six Brewery, Brewery, Bar, Aquaponics Setup, Dustin Fish Tank event. It's going to be sick as hell. You're going to see more uh, info on that throughout the week. I'm doubling down my videos this month for you all, so get excited. So here's the video with Gary Lang. Drop me a comment if you like it. Rainbow Fish for days with this, folks. Rainbow Fish, Species Sunday. Coming What's up, to you. Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dustin's Fish Tanks, bringing it to you. On a Sunday, Mr. Gary Lang, and folks, I'm big on my rainbows. I like my Bosmani, uh, but this guy Gary here behind me is a is a walking rainbow legend. Uh, you can see a clip here uh, to some of the rainbows in his actual tank. But I just want to talk to you, Gary, because you are hardcore into it, and you are a man of like purity with rainbows. And you've been to New Guinea. Been to New Guinea. Been to Australia. Well, how many times? Four times to New Guinea, a couple times to Australia. Well, so it's one thing to talk about a species that I keep in my aquarium. It's another thing to talk with a man who has uh, kept tons of them, bred tons of them, and then been to where they are. So um, you've, you've been all over the place. Um, I don't know where to start with you because you've got a great Calamistratum thing that we can talk about. I know you're awesome with rainbows, so we've got a lot in common here. But uh, let's start with the rainbows and in New Guinea, and I want to talk about what you see in the wild versus what you see in the hobby and the way that there's the genetics and, and how, how there's been some piss poor genetics brought into our hobby. Okay. Well, part of the problem with the hobby that's fish that we see in the hobby at the wholesale level is that they were purposely crossed. Now, that's unfortunate. Oh, really? Many, many years ago, somebody saw an orange rainbow fish and a red rainbow fish and said, or a blue rainbow fish and said, hey, we'll cross them, we'll make a different color, and instead of making a different color, they made a, made a brown rainbow fish. Okay. So that, that's, that's part of it. The other thing is just like every anything else you've got to be careful and, and stick to the stick you know look at your genetics and make sure that you're breeding good fish don't just take a whole bunch of fish and breed them together so that that's part of it and a lot of it could be you know could be feeding your fish you know you've got to feed your fish good wholesome things you feed you know live baby brine shrimp when they're smaller and feed better flake foods uh, good frozen brine shrimp blood worms um, if you're into live food certainly feed that but the quality foods is really a key for all right for so rainbows. and rainbows yeah. and now let me ask you this on the food i've always been of the impression and then i read this i read this i read your opinion differently on this i was reading on rainbowfish.eu i think it is the one uh, adrian i think runs yes uh, and he was talking about that i've heard they need a heavy veggie diet but you're saying you feed heavy with blood worms so i'd like to just talk about what percentages of meat versus veggie and that kind of thing that you run Adrian Tappan does not believe in feeding, and he's written the Bible on rainbow fish. Adrian Tappan does not believe in feeding heavy veggies. That's one of the other, oh, okay. the other fellows that talks about that, and he's actually gone and given the guys trouble. Some of the Australian fish eat more vegetables than the others, but uh, a lot of times you don't see that. A lot of these rivers are just mud bottoms or just gravel bottoms, so there's not a lot of vegetables for them to eat. They're eating. They're out there eating shrimp off the bottom or eating insects off the top, and just about anything that'll fit in their mouth. Oh, okay, so, so the veggie thing yeah. is a little out of yeah. the way. Yeah, the, you got me there, Richard? You got my siphon? He's stealing my siphon okay. behind me. I gotta okay. show this. Just people, it's a hot okay. commodity at the end of the yep. aquatic experience. Yes, people exactly. want your siphon. The, the 20, veter dollars veterans like me know to get the siphons early. So, yep, exactly. as I see him snaking it away. But uh, yeah, you can go ahead and scrape the gravel if you want to. Uh, <laughs> But uh, all right, so kidding aside, though, so that's good to know. So you, they eat insects, whatever. So don't really think, because yeah. I was always a 70% veggie yeah. guy, and you're saying yeah. you can go heavy yeah. with the, with yeah. the live foods, Certain, meatier certainly. foods, not a problem. And, and also, one thing I do on my breeding or my feeding my fish, I give them one day off. So one day, one they, day off, one day, nice. One day they starve. So let that all go through digestion. That's a huge that's tip, so. folks, because yeah. a lot of people overfeed yeah. to begin with. So you let them have one day off. Now, do you do a do you do any? Do you hit them with everything different? I mean, what's I, your feeding yeah, like? I, I like to feed a lot of different things because you know I like pizza, but if I eat pizza all the time, you know I might be right, kind of unhealthy. Right. So yeah. you have to feed pizza, you have to feed the steak, and you know veggies too, okay. and, all, and all the things. So that's why I like to do blood worms. I like to do. You're the man. Thanks, brother. Shrimp. 
Dry trip McCrill. Okay, the, the, even krill, even though yeah, it's a saltwater. Yeah, you know, yes, yes. Certainly, okay. certainly it's high, high in a lot of uh, okay. anthens and everything else. And the freeze dried stuff is good. Uh, you know, mice is shrimp. If you get wow, the, even you know, mice. If, if you've got the big, if you've got the big rainbows and they can handle the mice, a frozen mice, yeah, that's that's perfect. So they eat a lot of, of their they're omnivores. They'll okay. eat a lot of things, but good stuff. You know, you don't get the real cheap food that's loaded with carbohydrates because carbohydrates just aren't good for any fish, okay. especially rainbows. They just don't. Okay. So good. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so everyone's gaffing my siphon. Uh, so it's the, end of the show. it's the end of the show. They want the siphon. So, all right, so on to rainbows. I'm going to talk about the species, and you're going to send me off on some of these. So let's sure. talk about some of your uh, some of your favorite species. What are the g – give me your, your, your top three. We'll just talk about one, what you like about it. Well, let's talk about – I'll talk about one first. Wamanesi. Okay, the, the emerald Wan, 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 I want a Wanamensis. Wanamensis? Wan, 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 I, I want a Wanamensis. A Wanamensis. Yeah, All right, now this Wan, is a fish that I had, and it, the damn thing got internal parasites, and I never yes. was able to beat it. They're, they're horrible when that happens. What What do you think about that fish, Wanamensis? What do you look for? Um, the good Wanamensis, and unfortunately they're not down in Florida, they will be in two years. That's on my oh, goals and my list nice. of things to do. That is going to be down there, and also the red-eyed dragons, the multi-sculmata, are also going to be down in Florida in two years. So you're going to be seeing that fish down there. As in Florida, and you're bringing them down there to get the products Florida going. Wholesalers, yes. Right, so this they're is huge for the hobby, folks. Have, huge for the hobby. The fish. But good, they're getting them from you. Yeah, the good one right. that's is have the, the dorsal and anal fin come back and actually touch the tail uh, fin. So okay. that's, and I you look one. at them yeah, now, yeah. they're nice and short. They just don't have that, that, that look to them. So, okay. Um, they've been in the hobby for quite some time, and even the even the hardcore uh, rainbow fish people, they're starting to have trouble with uh, 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 viability. You know, 20, 30 percent of the eggs are viable, and the rest are really? not. Really? Why but is now, that? Um, because they've been interbred for so long. They only brought back five or six fish the very first time they collected wow. them. It wasn't a lot of fish. Oh, okay. And that's the same for a lot of these rainbows. Stuff we bring back sometimes, you just can only get a few of them. Uh, same thing with Heiko. Som sometimes there was things where you brought back 20 or 30. Other times it was only a few. So okay, you okay. get what you can bring back. You know? All right. We've talked about wombats. What about I've had internal parasite problems periodically with my rainbows. Why is this? Um, I feel like they, yeah, they, yeah. I I don't know. I, I you know you get your flubenazole out and some of your other dewormers and stuff like okay. that. Okay. What is it called again? Flu flubenazole. Flubenazole. I mean, okay. Yeah. yeah there. You know. Look. Look at the internal parasite. I'm not an uh, an expert at that, so I I usually don't have any problems okay. with those. And okay. even the wild ones, I don't have too many problems with. So if you've got a sick fish and it gets in that tank and uh, you treat the whole yeah, tank, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. But but you know, maybe that's what happened. You get one fish that you didn't realize was sick and it gets to your rainbows and then and then they die. The thing that's really important about rainbow fish is to watch out for TB. And you can, uh, you know, tuberculosis, uh, you know, mycobacterium is around everywhere. The best way to solve that problem is to not stress your rainbows. Keep them between 73 and about 80 degrees. Once you get higher temperatures, they stress them. Okay. Because remember, higher temperatures, less oxygen, right. and, or you know, oxygen in the water, that stresses them. And, and um, let's talk about oxygen and rainbows. Rainbows come from fast moving streams yes. primarily, so you want lots of oxygen. They're, they're in your water. really pretty minnows, right? So, so they're, you know, they, they're, they're, they're they, minnow, they need lots of water. Okay. Lots of the other thing, the big thing is changing the water, you know. When you How go big to, a water changes? I'm a big water change guy. I like 50% yeah. every two weeks, you know. Every two and, weeks. Yeah. Uh, every and you weeks. got a shitload of tanks, so yes. So yes, it's uh, you know I have different ways of being able to do that. Right, so. right, right. Karen, we're gonna get you next. So, oh, no. uh, so yeah. All right. So big water changes, big water changes, uh, feed a variety. Uh, any other, any other tips? Any size of tanks, for rainbows? I got size talk about. of tanks. And then, uh, well, my favorite tank right now is a three foot, and if I had more room, I'd have four foot tanks. Okay. So seventy five gallons at nineteen eight, good yeah, eighteen like inches wide, so you can plant it nice. Put crypts along the back. I have essentially I have three foot photo tanks. Okay. So one species for every tank. You know, a nice mop in there for them to breed on. A nice flat plant so they won't breed on the plants. But plants make rainbows happy. So nah. that's why my, you know, with the Aquatic Gardeners Association. The plants, plants and, and the rainbows, rainbows are, are made in heaven. Made bear, in heaven. Bear tank, they're all right, but when you put them in a planet tank, they'll they'll come up and they'll kiss you on the lips. All right, I got one more thing because you and I share okay. something in, high, in common. We talked about it earlier with the Cretum calamistratum. Give me the two-minute version of what happened with your calum. Uh, my calum got to be calamistratum. Calamistratum got to be about uh, an inch and a half around a diameter and one day it shot up a stalk so I had to take the top off the tank to let the little lily pop off the top then you know you get out the paintbrush and you brush the stamens and you put it on the pistol and 
you know, after about a, a month, all of a sudden you get this little form, which is like its big seed. Right. And it finally fell off, went to the bottom, and produced one little one little plant. And I did that about seven or eight times. Yeah. So it, was, it was fun. It was fun to do. It's fun to play those games. It is know? great. It is great. I read that article. I loved it. Yeah. So, Gary, thanks a million, man. I'm excited to show off some of your stuff and get some more photos coming out of stuff. Okay. Well, sounds good. Thanks, thanks Gary. Thanks.